The next giant leap inside SpaceX's Starship 5 II standing 394 feet tall against the Texas sky, Starship isn't just the most powerful rocket ever built. It's humanity's next home among the stars. While its gleaming steel exterior has captivated millions, the true revolution lies within its walls. Through six groundbreaking test flights, SpaceX has been quietly transforming Starship's interior. Gone are the days of Ship 16's rough surfaces and exposed framework. Today's Starship represents something far more refined, more capable, and more human. The evolution is striking. Early prototypes featured intricate lattice frameworks spiraling through their nose cones. Necessary, but space-consuming. Now those same areas reveal sleek, finished compartments with minimal support structures. This isn't just about aesthetics. It's about creating a vessel that can truly sustain life beyond Earth. With over 50 meters of height and a 9-meter diameter, Starship doesn't just carry cargo, it offers a glimpse into how we'll live and work in space. From hydroponic gardens to observation lounges, from private quarters to research labs, every cubic meter has been reimagined for the next chapter of human exploration. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Let's dive right in. The journey through Starship's interior begins where every space adventure starts, at ground level. As we step inside this marvel of engineering, we're entering more than just a rocket. We're walking into humanity's first interplanetary home. The lower section houses Starship's beating heart, up to nine Raptor engines, each a masterpiece of propulsion technology. But what makes this spacecraft truly revolutionary isn't just its raw power. It's how SpaceX has transformed every cubic meter above those engines into a carefully crafted environment for both cargo and crew. Picture yourself ascending through six distinct levels, each designed with the precision of a Swiss watch and the comfort of a modern living space. The cargo deck sits at the foundation, a cavernous space that could swallow a small house whole. This isn't just storage, it's the seed from which future colonies will grow. Here, robots and rovers await their chance to roll onto alien soil. Scientific instruments stand ready to unlock the mysteries of other worlds. The electrical systems that will power humanity's next giant leap hum quietly in their housings. But SpaceX knows that space exploration isn't just about machines. As we move up to the second level, we discover something unprecedented in spacecraft design. A garden. Not just any garden, but a sophisticated hydroponic system where future astronauts will nurture their own fresh food. The psychological impact of tending to growing things, of seeing green leaves unfurl in the sterile environment of space, cannot be overstated. This isn't just about nutrition, it's about maintaining that crucial connection to Earth while venturing far from home. The third floor reveals SpaceX's commitment to long-term human well-being. A complete exercise facility ensures astronauts can maintain their strength against the degrading effects of zero gravity. The equipment here isn't just copied from Earth, it's reimagined for space. Specialized treadmills and resistance devices work in harmony with the spacecraft's limited resources. Adjacent to this are the life support systems, including advanced water recycling and waste management facilities. The engineering challenge here was immense. Every drop of water must be tracked, cleaned, and reused with perfect efficiency. As we climb to the fourth floor, we enter the crew quarters. SpaceX has learned from the International Space Station's decades of experience, but they've taken it further. Private sleeping pods offer more than just a place to rest. They're personal sanctuaries. Each pod provides acoustic isolation, individual climate control, and enough space to create a genuine sense of home. The psychology of long-duration spaceflight demands this level of privacy and comfort. The fifth floor showcases perhaps the most dramatic innovation in Starship's design. While early renders showed massive windows offering panoramic views of space, SpaceX has evolved the concept further. The latest designs incorporate advanced display technology and augmented reality systems, providing crews with both actual exterior views and enhanced visualization of their surroundings. This approach maintains structural integrity while still delivering the psychological benefits of feeling connected to the space environment. Reaching the command deck on the sixth floor, we find ourselves in what feels like a bridge from science fiction made real. But unlike Hollywood's flashy designs, every screen, 
Every control surface and every workstation here serves a vital purpose. The automation systems reduce crew workload without sacrificing human oversight of critical functions. The ergonomics of each station reflect thousands of hours of human factors research, but Starship's true potential becomes clear when we consider its role in establishing permanent lunar presence. Each vessel carries not just cargo and crew, but the building blocks of future habitation. SpaceX's brilliant innovation lies in designing Starship sections to be repurposed after landing. The very walls that protected astronauts during their journey can become the foundations of lunar bases. Consider the logistics. A Starship arrives carrying up to 100 metric tons of cargo. After unloading, instead of standing idle or returning empty, its pressurized sections can be repurposed. The cargo section, with its thousand cubic meters of space, transforms into living quarters, research laboratories, or agricultural facilities. The massive fuel tanks, once emptied, become storage facilities for water, fuel, and other critical resources. This isn't just efficient, it's revolutionary. Traditional space architecture requires sending dedicated habitat modules at enormous expense. SpaceX's approach turns every cargo delivery into an opportunity to expand lunar infrastructure. A mobile crane, delivered on an earlier flight, can separate the cargo section from the propulsion system. The cargo section then finds new life as a horizontal habitat, while the tank section joins a growing network of storage facilities. The economics of this approach are compelling. Most of the complex assembly work happens on Earth, where it's cheaper and easier. The components arrive on the moon pre-tested and ready for integration. SpaceX can mass produce these sections using the same production lines that build their Earth return vehicles, dramatically reducing costs. Each repurposed Starship section gets covered with lunar regolith, providing protection from radiation and micrometeorites. The lower gravity of the moon makes this construction process far more manageable than similar operations would be on Earth. Networks of these repurposed sections connected by pressurized corridors will grow into the first true lunar cities. The business implications are profound. SpaceX could sell these converted habitats outright, lease them to other companies or governments, or maintain them as part of a lunar infrastructure service. The company could even partner with other corporations to develop specialized facilities, creating a diverse ecosystem of lunar commerce. This approach to space infrastructure represents more than just clever engineering. It's a fundamental shift in how we think about space settlement. Every mission, every landing, builds not just towards scientific goals, but toward permanent human presence. The same principles that make this work on the moon can be applied to Mars, where Starship sections could form the cornerstone of the first Martian cities. The technical challenges have been immense. SpaceX has had to rethink everything from how to maintain atmospheric pressure in repurposed sections to how to connect multiple units into larger complexes. They've developed new welding techniques, new sealing systems, and new ways to integrate life support across multiple connected units. The results are testament to the company's engineering prowess and their unwavering focus on making life multiplanetary. This is where SpaceX's vision transcends traditional aerospace thinking. They're not just building a rocket or even a spacecraft. They're creating a complete system for extending human civilization beyond Earth. Every detail of Starship's interior, from its modular design to its convertible spaces, serves this greater purpose. What looks like a cargo ship or crew transport today could become someone's home, workplace, or research lab tomorrow. The implications ripple beyond SpaceX itself. Their approach to lunar and Martian infrastructure could become the template for all future space development. Other companies are already studying how to adapt their systems and equipment to work with repurposed Starship sections. A whole new industry of space architecture and construction could emerge, built on the foundation SpaceX is laying with these innovations. As we look to the future, we see how Starship's interior design bridges the gap between our spacefaring dreams and the practical realities of living off Earth. It's not just about getting there, it's about staying, working, living, and thriving. Every feature, every system, Every cubic meter has been designed with this ultimate goal in mind. This isn't just a vehicle to space, it's the key to unlocking humanity's multi-planetary future. 
As Starship continues to evolve, each test flight brings us closer to this ambitious vision. SpaceX isn't just building transportation. They're crafting the foundation of humanity's multi-planetary civilization. From its revolutionary interior design to its transformative potential as permanent infrastructure, Starship represents our species' next great milestone. We're witnessing the birth of technology that will reshape human history. The question isn't if we'll live and work on other worlds, but when. And with each starship that rises from Starbase, that future draws nearer. This is Elon Musk 24 Hours, bringing you the latest developments in our journey to the stars. If you're excited about humanity's space future, hit that subscribe button and join our community of space enthusiasts. Leave a comment below with your thoughts on how Starship's interior design could evolve even further. Don't forget to like this video and share it with fellow space fans who dream of our multi-planetary future. Until next time, keep looking up. The next chapter in human spaceflight is just beginning. Hey everyone, welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Today we're standing at SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas, looking at what might be Elon Musk's most ambitious engineering achievement yet, the Raptor engine. This isn't just another rocket engine, it's the culmination of years of SpaceX innovation, pushing the boundaries of what we thought possible in rocket science. What we're looking at is only the third attempt in history to create an engine of this type, and it's the first that will actually fly. The Raptor represents everything Elon and SpaceX are working toward, making life multi-planetary. While it's not the most powerful engine ever built or the most efficient, it brings together a unique combination of features that could make regular trips to Mars possible. In today's video, we're taking you inside the technology that powers SpaceX's future. We'll compare the Raptor to legendary engines like the Space Shuttle's RS-25, the Saturn V's F1, and SpaceX's own Merlin. We'll explore why Elon chose methane as fuel when no methane-powered engine has ever reached orbit. Most importantly, we'll show you why this engine could be the key to humans becoming a multiplanetary species. I've created simple animations to help explain these complex systems, whether you're a rocket enthusiast or just curious about SpaceX's latest innovations. This is Elon Musk, 24 hours, bringing you the latest in SpaceX technology. Let's dive right in. The story of the Raptor engine begins with a challenge that seemed impossible. Back in 2012, when Elon Musk first mentioned SpaceX was developing a new engine, many aerospace experts said it couldn't be done. Building a full-flow stage combustion engine? Only two teams had ever attempted it, and both failed to create anything beyond test stand prototypes. The Soviets tried with their RD-270 in the 1960s. The Americans tried with their integrated powerhead demonstrator in the early 2000s. Both hit technical walls they couldn't overcome. But to understand why the Raptor is such a breakthrough, we need to start with the basics of how rocket engines work. Think of a rocket engine like a controlled explosion in a tube. The challenge isn't just making things go boom, it's about controlling that explosion with ultimate precision thousands of times more powerful than a car engine, running at temperatures that could melt most metals. The heart of any rocket engine is its combustion chamber. This is where fuel and oxidizer meet, creating an inferno hot enough to melt through almost anything. But getting those propellants into the combustion chamber? That's where things get interesting. And that's where the Raptor shows its true innovation. Most rocket engines use what we call a gas generator cycle. SpaceX's Merlin engine, which powers the Falcon 9, uses this approach. It's like having a mini rocket engine that powers the pumps that feed the main engine. Simple, reliable, but not the most efficient. Some of your precious fuel gets wasted, burned just to run the pumps. The Russians took a different approach with their RD-180 engine. They went for what's called an oxygen-rich stage combustion cycle. They essentially created materials that could withstand hot, high-pressure oxygen something American engineers long thought impossible. When they first saw these engines after the Cold War, they couldn't believe what they were looking at. But the Raptor? The Raptor takes both approaches and combines them in a way that's never been successfully done before. 
It's what we call a full flow stage combustion engine. Both the fuel and oxidizer get pre-burned before entering the main combustion chamber. It's like having two engines powering one main engine, but using every last drop of propellant for thrust. The real genius comes in how SpaceX solved the materials problem. They developed their own alloy called SX500. According to Elon, it can withstand over 800 bar of hot oxygen rich gas. That's like being eight kilometers deep in the ocean. But instead of water, it's superheated, highly corrosive oxygen. But here's where the story takes another turn. SpaceX didn't just choose this complex engine design for better efficiency, they chose it because of Mars. You see, the Raptor runs on methane, not the kerosene that powers the Falcon 